Hi. There we are. All right, guys. Something happened. Are. Yeah, I think Blizzard is uh, shutting us down here, but we're good. We're back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had nothing to do with that. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you're just going to have to enjoy the faces. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about? I don't even know anymore. Um, I oh, uh, just like, like Overwatch and like conflict the pressure that we're getting and putting on, onto ourselves, right? Yep, exactly. Um, and I, I think that the main thing that was like pretty stressful, or, like the thing that we really want to get right was like to really uh, do it right by our peers at Blizzard because, you know, like you got to understand that like for like many, 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 many years, like the rest of the company really supported us while we were trying to figure out what Titan, Project Titan would be. And mm -hmm. at the end, we decided, to, you know, like it wasn't worth pursuing, but like during that time, man, like you're, you're not doing much, right? Like you're, I mean, you're, you're definitely prototyping and are ding and everything. So you're working really hard, but like, you're not doing too much for the company at that point. Mm -hmm. And that was many, many, many years of that. So uh, when we got like a, when we crashed and burned quote unquote, and we got like a second chance, like it was like, I think all of us were like kind of like feeling that pressure of like, man, like we really want to to do it right by by them because they've been super awesome and super supportive with us. So, so that that was the, the biggest pressure. And then when it, when it came to the style and everything, I think that we we had that thankfully sort of like figured out. And then and then we we actually found the fund very quickly, which was like another good sign for us. So like within six months, we were like. I remember like us like just playing too much of it, which is mm -hmm. usually a good sign, mm -hmm. even though with like gray boxes and all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, yeah no, that, that was that was good. That was How, good. So the pressure was some somewhere else, but it, there was definitely a lot of pressure. That's something I'm I've always been curious about. Like, how do you how did I guess Blizzard overall manages manages time of, of playtime? Is it something that it's like every couple, you know, every day, or is like couple? Yeah, no. week of like I can talk about that. I can definitely talk about that, and I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna prephrase that by saying that I don't know how that operates on other teams because I was lucky enough to always be on the same team. I mean, I don't know if it's actually lucky enough, but whatever. I was always on the same team, right? Yeah. Um, and um, and the way that we usually do that is that we do have at least one playtest. Uh, they are not none of the playtests are usually mandatory, by the way, unless there is really something that like production is like, hey guys, we're really taking the afternoon, we really need to test that feature. Please hop on in. But generally speaking, we do have by default one playtest every day at six o'clock, where mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna either test, um, you know, an um, a balance change or like a new feature or like something like that, something that like, like none of the playtests are actually meant around just having fun. Like the, it's definitely part of it, obviously, because you're still playtesting your game, but there's always like kind of like an agenda to the playtest that we're going to, we're going to do. And also because it's so easy to actually um, spin off uh, or like, or like to, to start a playtest, you'll see randomly throughout the day like uh, a lot of people just saying hey guys can i get like five or six people on this play test for like 20 minutes i just need to test that new ui element or like that new like um nerve balance or like whatever whatever it is you know and then and then if you want if you have some time you happen to have some time you just hop on it and then usually like people talk about it after or like you send a quick email about like a feedback regarding the feature that they wanted to do but like that's usually how play test works at least on, on the overwatch team Mm -hmm. like there's always like an, an agenda and then whenever it's another game that ships like let's mm -hmm. say like wow just ships an expansion then we have like usually the day after or like the, the day of the launch we usually have like at least an afternoon if not like a full day of like yay everybody just plays or yeah. you know like wow or something right yeah yeah, yeah that's cool so well, i have i mean people always ask this question and i'm gonna ask you because i don't okay. know if I have a chance to to uh answered this before, but like if you, if someone will come to you and I'm sure a lot of people comes to you just asking this, like if someone comes to you just saying like, what do I have to do to work at, at Blizzard, to work at Overwatch? Mm -hmm. and someone that's kind of starting, like what, like, what would you say to those, to those artists? Um, yeah, no, absolutely. That, that's a very common question. Um, and I, I think that that question has been answered. The cool thing is that we, it's not like Blizzard has a magic recipe. I think that that's the first thing that people need to really understand. Like the core principle that like you, Raf, probably gave to other people will apply to us as well, which is if you're starting in the industry or like you, you're kind of like, like um, you know, like kind of like working on your, your portfolio, the first thing and the no brainer is just make art that emulates the style that you want to work on. Like that's already something that is because 
as somebody who's going to review your portfolio, if I can see already that you're going to be plug and play, mm-hmm. when when you join the team, you are already scoring so many points with us, right? Like there's a lot of times where I'll see like a, a fan art of like somebody who did like something that is either based on an Overwatch character or even like just like, um, you know, um, b- like based on our style and like with another one, like, like our latest uh, character artist, Ying, like she basically did like a, um, a whoa elf, uh, whatever dark elf, whatever with your Overwatch style, and we're like, wow, this is super cool. And like, let's let's. And then when we saw the portfolio, we're like, okay, I remember this. And like, and it kind of like was very natural to actually talk to that person, right? Mm-hmm. So I think that that's the first thing that I would say is that like definitely do that. Um, another one, which is actually gonna be a little bit of a potentially an, an unpopular opinion, so bear with me. But that, that's something that I personally found very uh, very uh, useful in my career, at least, is that if you don't get a job at your dream company right away, it might suck, but it's, it might actually be good for you. Because when you start, let's not kid ourselves. We are sometimes immature. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes of like a wide variety of things work related or like or like maybe like you're gonna have an interaction with a person that could have gone better whatever there is a part of me that was like really um really thankful for like i like kind of like learning through all of those moments in a company at, at like for like companies and stuff like that that like i i definitely wanted to work for but like that was not that were not necessarily like my ultimate goal right like and and then once you reach that and you have like all of that experience um behind you it makes you cherish that opportunity even more because sometimes when you get your dream job too soon there is a little bit of that effect of like feeling a tiny bit entitled feeling like you know like you, you might have like a spike of ego you might have like a little bit of that that thing going on and and you might actually just do something that might make you lose that job because you didn't you didn't think it through right like so there is like just a little bit of like that humbling path that sometimes some people will have to take and i'm part of them right where i always wanted to work at blizzard like that's definitely something when i started in the industry it was either like oh i want to work for pixar or i want to work for blizzard you know Mm -hmm. and uh, it it took me 10 years to get there you know and uh, and i'm super glad because when i joined it was such an amazing opportunity and adventure and, and that's probably why i'm still there to be honest with you yeah that that that's probably why i'm like and even though we went through like the like up and downs, like ups and downs, you know, like there, there is something special about that, that, that company that really, uh, that I really discovered because of my previous experiences. So I mm-hmm. sometimes I'll tell students like shoot for the, for the stars, but if you land on the moon, just enjoy your stay on the moon, you know, like, like just like really make the best out of it and learn as much as you can, knowing that it'll just make you better for whenever you're going to actually reach the, the actual star you want to reach, you know? Yep. And then yep. sometimes another thing is that, some people have like assumption of like, oh, I want to work for the company. And then they reach that and it, it doesn't match their expectation. Mm-hmm. Right. And then they're like completely like baffled and they're like completely disappointed in like the whole industry at that point. And then and it, it has like a big emotional impact on those people where like, when, when you join, like, okay, I wanted to work at the company. I, I didn't get it, but like that other awesome company is allowing me to work for them and I'm learning and everything. And I, you know what? Actually, I like that stuff better. And like, and you're learning about yourself as well uh, among among, the, among the, the, the road, you know, like, I mean, like, while well, you're, you're going down, down that, that path. And I think that, that it's as important, to be honest. Yeah. You know, what, what you're saying is perfect, you know. It's something that, that we often see and, and I completely agree with you. Like if, if sometimes you... If you don't get the job, it means because you're not ready. And that's a good thing. You just have to keep keep going and keep trying to get to that level because exactly what you said, you know, often if people will get get in and they're not ready, then then you, you'll get out and you might miss out on something that's very special like that. I see a lot of people uh, leaving, you know, the studio and then wanting to come back because they thought it was bad. But it's, but it's because they don't know. They don't know anything else. Like they, they So right. You're so yeah. right. Yeah, they want to come back. So yeah, ma- make sure that, you know, even if Blizzard is one of your goals, that you're making the best o- out of whatever you are, because then you know, you'll get there. Um, and, and you're abyssal right of like, p- people are often disappointed if they're not ready. And it's not because of the job, it's just because of you. And, and then you might go do something else. Then, and then maybe you're just not happy with and then you get frustrated. And, 
And then you, you know, you go do something completely different that oftentimes it's not because you want, it's just because the reality is pushing you to do certain things. So yeah, I completely agree with you. That was a way better way to explain it. Yeah, absolutely. So exactly yeah. what Brad said. No, <laughs> uh, no, 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 absolutely. I agree a hundred percent with you, dude. Like that's, that's exactly what, what is happening. And, and, um, and I, I just think that like your, the, what you want when you get out of school is not going to be the thing that you want necessarily after mm -hmm. after five years you know like just like i know that, that that's like a very common question in interviews like or like that you kind of like we ask ourselves like where do i want to be in five years there's so much that can happen that mm -hmm. you just might end up completely in somewhere else like um like like blizzard was definitely on on my map but like um i initially i studied to actually just be in the in the movie business in animation right like i saw toy story and i was like i'm gonna work on like i think it was like number um, i was hoping to work on toy story 2 back then <laughs> but um okay i think i'm back yeah, yeah, yeah i'm good. back i'm back i'm back uh but anyways yeah so i was um i was working on like i, I wanted um i don't know where i left off but like anyways I, I wanted to kind of like work for like animation industry and everything and yeah. then i ended up in the game industry you know why i ended up in the game industry because on my third year when i was studying at like this uh this school in um in in belgium right and they didn't have video game departments or anything like that it was just like classic animation degree rough stuff you know like you, you you touch a little bit of everything um started modeling with splines stuff like that amazing uh and then i had to do my internship right and of course i was late and i didn't get any of the companies i wanted to work for as oh, an intern no. i didn't have like the chance to apply because it was too late and then we found me and my friend we found like a random dude random freelancer working out of like somewhere in the middle of nowhere and that guy literally became my first big mentor. Mm -hmm. Like he, and he was working for a video game outsourcing company. And, 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 and I went from like wanting to work in the movie uh, business or animation business to wanting to actually work in the game business because I, uh, I just, I just clicked in that moment. And mm -hmm. it was like, like a sheer luck. Like I was like completely out of nowhere and I was like, oh wow, this is actually super cool. It's way faster. I can actually texture and sculpt and like potentially do concept. And like, there's, there was just a lot more Liberty yeah. uh, as well for me. And then we did our final work for the teachers using like, like doing like an actual video, like a video game demo. They didn't know what to do with it because they were like, mm -hmm. uh, you guys, weren't you guys supposed to do like a short or something? And they made it short. What is this? <laughs> uh, but thankfully they were like, there were like two guys that were like actually like in the video game business and we literally got a call even before uh, finishing school and we started to work right away. So I, I got to actually start working even before uh, finishing up school because entirely because of that guy and because of like the, just the click. So my yeah. point is you never know, like anything that you think that you know right now will change. So mm -hmm. my, my point is like embrace every single opportunity that is pre being presented to you and just try to learn from it. And, and you'll see after that experience if the goal is still the same. That's perfect, yeah. And I, especially now these days, like there's so much out there and it's so easy to like, I think even before, not to tell how, how old we are, but before, <laughs> like there was, kind of, there was kind of like goals, right? They had like a demo reel of like, oh, you want to do characters or you like, just make a character demo reel. But things are changing so fast and that like that kind of doesn't exist anymore it's all about like how do you present your work on our station or how do you get like enough pieces on your portfolio that you can apply to a certain job um so it definitely there's so much out there like you see a lot of concept artists using 3d as well so even that before it wasn't a, you know yeah. wasn't a thing and now it's just confusing like what do you do like what how do you actually build something that's that's meaty enough to you can apply to those places and they you know that seem like you're you're not lost so yeah more if you find someone like you just said, like if someone that can mentor you that has been on the industry a little bit longer, can probably guide you to certain uh, decisions that you do early on that will save you a lot of time. But again, like 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 you said, that you just have to embrace what you like to do at a certain point, knowing that it might change after two to two three years or whatever you know, whatever how long you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, you, you absolutely. And, and the mentoring, you know, like I think it's different for everybody. Like. I think I would have done like really well in the old times when there was like a master and an apprentice. I would have loved to have that dynamic because that's really how I learned the, the better, like the most. Yeah. Like I know a lot of, of the people out there are like super amazing at like just like finding something online, just doing it and that's it. 
And I super respect that. And I do that to some extent as well. But like, there is something just like priceless about being able to, to kind of like really talk about something with somebody else that you really like the style, or like that you want to kind of like dive into and yeah. really kind of like get the ins and outs of like why it's, why they're doing what they're doing. And I think that that's how, that's why I'm actually developing the way that I'm developing the way that I'm like mentoring other people is because um, I, I, that's something that sometimes you don't get when, when you, when you, you know, you, you go by yourself. And I, I think that that's also really good. And there's sometimes like even better things that happen when you like just do it by yourself because you, you learn through those, those, those harsh fails as well. Right. Which is obviously something that we all do regardless, but, mm -hmm. um, I just personally like the interaction. I've had a, a few people like that in my life that have really unblocked my plateau when it comes to like art blocks and kind of like, it was maybe like just one little thing. You know, like in one thing that I talked to them about and I was like, oh my God, this is actually unlocking a whole new world, you know, and I'm like, I'm going to the next level now. And I had like that, like four or five times in, in my, in my career so far, you know, and it's, it's really amazing. Like for me, like I, I find that like very, very, very satisfying to be able to do that. I had similar things, especially because I, I started working very young. So to me, like the, you know, lead leads in the past, past studios that I've been, uh, at like they've definitely been like big mentors of i think it all always comes down to like to the artist itself like me of i'm always listening and try to make the best out of, like just get as much as i can of like information like you said like if the person is willing to give you like why not just just really try to absorb as much as you can and even if you move on to, to something else there's so much you can learn from that experience right so people need to just try to open up and try to find those those artists like and it doesn't have to be you know, like, like a uh, super senior guy, if th this person is like two years ahead of you, then he has two years of like, you know, more experience than you have. So it's just more try to find those, especially if you're starting, it's hard to get that connection with older artists, like people have veterans, like in this in the industry. But if you find those same uh, artists that are maybe a little bit or even at the same level that you are, that you can make those connections, try to build that, right? And, and, and you do that in, in school a lot. That's why I think school is not so much for the the work that you do in school, but just that I would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> but you can yeah, do, you can do totally. it online too. I agree. Like I think that, that that's a really good uh, discussion point. To be honest with you, is like school or no school, right? Like I think that like there's actually multiple schools uh, in terms of like uh, mindsets around it. Um, my take on it is that granted that you're not ruining yourself financially. The biggest thing that I took away from going through that bachelor was not the work, definitely not the work or like how to UV or like, it was how to overcome a problem in a team environment. And that thing is really priceless. And that, that thing will, that single thing will really gear you up a lot better to work in a team environment where mm -hmm. sometimes I would say like, obviously there is down, downsides of it, right? Like, I feel like the best combo for me, if I were to, to, um, to talk about that with like somebody who's like starting and wants to kind of like do something there, I would say like try to find like a cheap um, school and like maybe online school, right? Like the thing that like Mark Brunet does is really cool. Like there's like uh, Nomans, like, I mean, obviously you did like a bunch of stuff. Like there's so much stuff. Like Chris Costa is doing something absolutely incredible right now with like uh, Fly on the Wall stuff. Like today is like, you guys are like doing so much for the community, like Raf and, and all of you guys are like doing so much, right? So there's so much content there that I would say, if you don't want to break the bank, just do that, but also try to find projects to work on. Back then, people that didn't want to go to school came from the mud scene, right? They were doing, they're making mods. Like a lot of like the most successful game developers out there are actually people that created the first CS maps or like created like the first Quake maps or like what are creating like mods. Like, I mean, man, like CS, yeah, sure. like most, the most played multiplayer to date, even to this day, I believe, sorry if I'm, I've got it wrong, but it's definitely up there, created by like a few dudes like that were like just like trying yeah. to figure stuff out, right? But together as well and there's 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 something really important about that because i've seen i've seen artists like really bunkering up and trying to absorb as much knowledge as they can and then they finally get the opportunity to work in a team and it's a disaster yes sir. it's absolutely a disaster yeah like they, they don't know how to interact with people they don't know how to 
make a concession. They don't know how to kind of like meet somebody else in the middle when there is like a tough call to make. Uh, don't know when to let go and when to fight for something. And all of that is just a bunch of soft skills that you start really learning naturally when you're like on the school project. Yeah. And it, I mean, in the technologies, it's evolving so fast that, right. you know, it's just a, something that's going to open up even more. Like people can make their own projects and, and you see like some people just don't like to work in studios and they get frustrated, but there's just so much out there. Like you don't have to follow any modes. Like you don't have to, you don't have to work at Blizzard if you don't want, of course, like just work on your game, all man. <laughs> just work on your game, open unity or like unreal. And just like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's free until you ship as far as I know. So like, yeah. just go for it, man. Like if that, that's really what you want, there's yeah. so much out there to just do it. Like I understand that there's a financial aspect to it and, and hopefully you, you can still live with your parents with your parents or whatever if you want to stop that off but like there's so there's more so than ever nothing preventing you from actually just tackling this the way you want and then you can reach out to more senior artists like you said right like you can absolutely mm -hmm. do that nowadays and 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 you know um 90 yeah. percent of the time we answer hopefully we do a good job at that uh <laughs> but uh um, don't, don't I feel me. like I should put like an FAQ or something like that. Like that would be probably easier. Uh, yeah. <laughs> because it's a lot of the same question. It's a lot of the same fears. I yeah. think it's that. It's not really the question. It's just the same fears. Like, how am I going to make it? Like, am I too old for this? Or like, or like is, am I actually going down the right path? And then and, and you need to kind of like reinforce that, that thing of like, we're just like, very fragile. We're all like super fragile, like insecure artists. And like, we need to go through that same funnel to yeah. kind of like try to get through this. So. Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to like your your life. Like, what do you want to do with it? Like, it's just it's not you're not gonna make like you're not gonna work on God of War. Like, even if that's your goal and that's something that you can kind of aim for, something is gonna happen for you, right? And then you're gonna have different opportunities. You you might be you know happier than than all of us doing what what you love. So like what you said at the beginning, just really focus on the craft on your craft and what you love to do because different doors would open. Like we'll never know the industry is changing so much. And even right now, there's so many opportunities out there. Like it's even it's really hard to hire. It. Like you probably can, can uh, just from mm -hmm. your experiences, like how to even oh, yeah. oh, make yeah. those teams. It's just like there's not enough people. There's so many games out there. There's so like the industry is evolving so crazy fast yeah. that at some point it all gonna it's all gonna crash. And and I, I think I think you know like uh, one thing that like I feel like we need to realize also as an industry is that like you mentioned like just to build up a little bit on that is that. You know, like Blizzard and, and Riots and, 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 you know, like Santa Monica and Naughty Dog and all of those studios that have like such an amazing, prestigious image are just not the single players anymore mm -hmm. on, the, on, the, on that board, right? And, and there is just a lot of people that are starting to also see success stories and stuff like that. So there's just a lot more opportunity for people, which I think makes it for like a healthier, um, uh, you know, like community and like a market as well. Like, I think it's actually really good that there is that stuff like that. Like people can say, I don't only have one path for success and I can just make my own game. And, and if it's good, there's actually a really good chance that I might actually make some money out of this, right? right? Because people have access to that and I, I can go straight to Steam or like to the Epic Store and actually start to actually have a discussion directly with the people that are gonna play my game. Yep. So there, there's just a lot of that, you know? Uh, I think we're a little bit past the Kickstarter phase. I think that like a couple of projects got really lucky on that one. And I think that, right. that bubble kind of like burst a little bit as far as I know. But um, you're right. It's, it's, it's becoming a little harder to, to hire uh, now, uh, yeah. which I think is okay. Like it's okay. Like it's also, I truly believe that sometime, I mean, like in the past, like companies were like really basing everything on their name and hoping that people would just take that for granted. Mm -hmm. And now there's, it's, it's a little bit more of like, hey, you interview us as much as we interview you, right? Like there's so many options that like, we really want to make sure that like we make this place as appealing as possible. And I think that that's super important as well. Yeah. I mean, Blizzard has always been appealing for everybody, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, really, card, I think yeah. I mean, Santa Monica, dude, like your studio is like amazing. Like, I, I, I really want. Once this whole thing is done, we should really give each other tours. Oh, yeah, you should, that. Like, need, yeah, you need to come. I, I out. really want to to see that because, and I feel like, I mean, I would love to. I don't know if you if you'd like to talk about that, but I, I would love to kind of like talk a little bit about like the culture that you guys have. Like, how is it? Like, what what is like kind of like the 
the, the the main things that like make you happy when when you when you go there like is there something specific about like the people that are working there like the way that you guys do things specifically that you like yeah i mean it all comes down to a ping pong table and uh a volleyball court a, a beach volleyball court. <laughs> yeah. all right all right all right so far so good <laughs> food <laughs> you guys have free food free food free, <laughs> free food that's good that's good we used to have free red bulls not anymore so that's uh well we have like the the you know Green, green tea or black tea, whatever the yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. Mess up your, no, I'm just kidding, but no, no, I, I mean, I you know, <laughs> that, is, that is definitely part of it. Like when you're selling the experience, like you want to be somewhere where, first of all, it's just the people. Like you want to go in, you know, that you, the, the family's there and, and you're building that community, the community that you can kind of just go and have fun, that you can always be open, always share stuff. There's so many things that happen within those walls to like just reinforce that culture of like sharing, like there's a lot of like movie nights, you know, game board, game board nights, like just there's so, so much, many of those things to just, just get people together. Like even like stand up. So we do like in the morning. So it's always that culture of just being open and, and knowing the person who's sitting next to you a little bit more. So you can have that, uh, happiness of going to work and like, you so I want like I, myself, I've, I've, I always look for places like that where I want to go to work because I want to talk to this you know, these people and, and we all share the same uh, taste. We're watching, th there's like Netflix night. There's like all these things oh, that- Oh, that's awesome. That's really cool that, actually. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of like, sometimes even even uh, too much of like those things. Like, <laughs> oh, can we make a game here or just get out? <laughs> <laughs> Stop taking care of me, it's, it's annoying. Yeah. Uh, no, another thing that yeah. I, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was gonna say, that's kind of what makes a difference for sure. Like. Would we agree? And I, I feel I, I could be wrong, but like from like the interaction that I've seen between that person and you online and like, and I, I feel very strong about like my relationship with my game director. Like mm -hmm. it feels like, I mean, like the reason of also I'm enjoying my time at Blizzard is because of Jeff Kaplan. And I feel like you guys have a little, the same with Corey, right? Like we're like, like it, it, you need that driving force at the top to kind of like share the passion. And sometimes it's emotional. Sometimes like those people need to be sometimes a little raw and it, it's okay. Uh, yeah. And there is something just humane about that. And, and I really respect that. And, and that, I think that that's, that's the thing that I keep me uh, from like, you know, like going anywhere right now is that like, there, there's just like that passion. And like, when I know that, okay, like Jeff Kaplan, like just definitely knows what he wants. And like, there's something very, um, there's an aura around those mm -hmm. type of people that will act you where you know that they just want to make a good game. You know mm -hmm. that there's no other reasons than that. And that's in their blood. And you mm -hmm. want to follow that. You know, like you don't want to follow somebody who just wants to sell a product. You want to to yep. follow a guy that wants to make a fucking good game. Yep. And 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 that's something very powerful. And I think that like when it comes to culture, I think that those guys are really a pillar of that as well in my opinion that's awesome yeah it's all i mean it's the leadership right you want to be you know kind of guided by someone who who is just trying to make the best like you, you don't have to worry about those things you know that the, the time that you're putting into the dedication towards something that's much bigger than than all of us is just like we're all doing this together you want to know that that thing is going to be you know the best it could be so yeah for sure man like Corey and then this, I mean, Corey is kind of the one that that's like more in front of the cameras, but there's so many right. bigger kind Absolutely. of yeah. you know, leadership roles that you can, that you know, they're there that, that, uh, makes it, you know, that much more special just to be there and Absolutely. not having to worry about, you know, are we making like, are we, are we really making a good game? It's like, you can, you know, like it's going to be the best it could, it could be. Right. And there's, you know, there's quite a few places like that, but like not every place is like that where, where you have that kind of you know, leadership within yeah. a team that makes a completely uh, big difference. Yeah. And, and that makes it like very transparent. I mean, we work with the same person. We worked with Jacko, right? Yeah, Jacko yeah. Sunny. The guy yeah. is insanely cool. Like, and he's so raw and so like, like, you know, like there's a part of the emotionality that I love about him. And then sometimes it's like, man, like, did I, did I go too strong? Like, was I like too me or whatever? And I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, like just keep that up. Like, this is really why we love you guys. It's like, you guys are just like, Give us like the st straight answer. Like you guys are very transparent about everything that's going on in the industry of like the project or anything like that. And like, there is something really, really powerful where you feel like you're part of the same project. You're not yeah. working for them, but you're working with them. And I think that that's a big thing that like not every single company manages to, to, to cultivate, you know, where like the higher ups that are like really high 
are still like literally sitting next to you and like just doing the same stuff and struggling sometimes with the same stuff and like we're all just making this this game together and there's yeah. a lot of power to that that's that's rare to find so if you guys find that just stick to it oh yeah it's, yeah, like, a, it's like a good any good relationship it's yeah. like just just hold, yeah. hold on to that it's, that's what it comes down to like yeah just finding that leadership core and, and we do a lot of things like that and just kind of like i, I want to be in a place that i can tell other people that like you want to be here like you don't want to be in a place where you just don't feel like is the future of like of your career or anything else so like building up the, that leadership is huge for the studio dude so let me get some questions from the chat here yeah absolutely yeah get, sorry you know, yeah I, I, I speak, all the I speak, I speak like, too much, man. Like it's, it's, been, it's been amazing. Like I think all the questions I had, I, I, I mean, you, you touch on a lot of different things. So that, that was awesome. So Angelo is just asking, since we're talking about this, but, um, are you, are you planning to do any mentorship programs? Like, do you know any, have you done this before, uh, teaching um, side of it? I, I'm not even going to mention my teaching experience, which was like an actual real teaching experience, like in a school, in the school that I actually graduated from, like they kind of like learned me back in for like six months when I graduated and like really, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, it, it's kind of funny because like some of my students quote unquote are also like people in the industry right now. And we kind of like laugh because if you look at like pictures of me teaching at a time, you cannot tell who's the teacher and who's the student. Like <laughs> most of them are actually potentially like like uh, older than me and everything. So it was it was just yeah. awkward. Um, and and to be honest with you, I think that that experience actually created a little bit of a PTSD for me. So I'm, I'm always like kind of like trying to understand: Am I gonna actually be able to actually teach some somebody? Like I know that I do that at work. Like I do that at work, and I, I really enjoy it when I do it. But there's a difference between doing that and actually creating like an actual real mentorship that will where people will would potentially pay me or like what were stuff like that so i want to do it because i know that i'm like slowly getting like ready to kind of like really wanting to do this but like mm -hmm. i i need to kind of like find the time and the energy to kind of like just go for it but uh yeah to answer the question that's definitely something i would love to do and not in five years or anything like that like really trying to kind of like get something there going uh, sooner rather than later um, okay. i'll probably poke raf to actually understand how, he's, yeah, how yeah. he does it <laughs> if you ever want to do it like for sure I, I know a lot of people will be interested and i can definitely yeah like I, i've had like a couple of like 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 geo actually contacted me like for like um uh what's that that's cool that he did his mentorship mold 3d i think it's is yeah. it that yeah exactly so i've had a couple of like uh company um reaching out to me or like even like um like you know, Numan and or like or like other stuff like that in the area. Mm -hmm. So, at some point, I'll just pull the plug and I'll just do it, um, and then I'll be all nervous and awkward for you guys for the first semester, and that's fine. <laughs> you have to do something like every maybe five years, just so you can kind of like, like I oh, know oh, yeah. everything I thought five years ago is just not relevant anymore. So you just do another one. Right. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so, but I definitely want to do it because I, I enjoy that. So, if you guys are ready for like somebody like over explaining stuff, <laughs> then you you've got the guy. <laughs> All right, let's let's talk. Let's talk. This this will be fun. So, okay, different question, and and this is something I, I wanted to ask, but um, someone is asking here, uh, Arthur, if uh, who care, which character was the best design in your opinion for Overwatch? But I think more. What I wanted to ask was just how did, how is that designing process? Like, does the character guys or you, or you guys have input on the next things, or is it just more you get one right. idea, you solidify, and then and then yeah, no, absolutely. So your favorite, I guess I can probably um, guess which is your favorite. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I, I think I, I sold Arn enough already to kind of like <laughs> make you guess. But um, joke aside, though, I think that um, I would like to differentiate the actual concept from like the idea of a character. Because mm -hmm. one thing that like team team four, like the Overwatch team is really cool about is that grabbing like an idea that can come from like anything or anybody. Uh, we have definitely ideas of skins that came from like other people. We have like ideas of characters that came from like just a design point of view or like an artistic point of view or like even a name. Like Doomfist is a great example of that. Just a yeah. freaking name. And we're like, okay, that sounds great. What can we do around that? Um, uh, so there is a lot of that. So in terms of like, hey, can we have an input regarding that? Like, like I even pitched like a hero design it hasn't been made or anything like that. But like, it was super fun to kind of like pitch that idea and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And like, kind of like see, oh, some interest from some parts and definitely not for others and stuff like that. But like, it, it helps you also understand what the game needs at what time. 
So that, that's another thing when, whenever you pitch something. Sure. Um, and um, so when it comes to like the realization of like an idea, a core idea, usually it usually starts with the concept team. We're like super incredibly lucky to have like, like a lot of like awesome concept artists and it's insane also. I don't know how Arn or like that team does it, but like they have a, a way to fuse their style. Like I think that just Arn is just like, I, I mean, I'm sure that he's teaching them and stuff like that, but like his style is so strong. Like, like it's almost like a gravity. You're like pulled towards it. And you and, and then you'll see like artists over the course of like a few months starting to, you're like, okay, I don't know who did that concept anymore. <laughs> And it's cool because it's it's really um, it's really predictable for us, right? And uh, the thing that we have definitely an impact on, and I think that it varies, like like from like if you're doing a weapon or if you're doing a character and stuff like that, is uh, whenever you need to translate that concept. That's really where the 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 character modeler, um, weapon artist, whatever you want, uh, like kind of like goes into the pit and kind of like try to figure stuff out because. You know, like we don't necess- we don't get blueprints, we don't get orthos or anything like that. Like we actually hate that. So we'll get like a a front recorder and a back recorder, and then just go. That's it. That's the only thing. And then sometimes we don't have color. Sometimes it's just flat color. It's just it just works better this way for us because it allows us to kind of like there is a translation. Like if you look at like a concept from Arn and you look at like a model in the game, you can clearly tell that they're like linked, but like it's not like a one to one translation either. Right, there is definitely like something where we realize that like between like uh, the influences that uh, we had like coming from like the West and then influences coming from the East and stuff like that, we kind of like get got like that super awesome um, mixture of both that kind of like became the Overwatch style. Mm-hmm. And so you need as a 3D artist, you really need to learn that style and know how to translate a concept into. Um, for Overwatch, like i like the, most of the time, what I what I what I'll tell uh, guys that are like joining the team is that, like sometimes they'll overanalyze the concept. There's like literally a brush stroke that like a concept artist did because he didn't pay attention. It literally becomes a fold, you know, <laughs> on the 3D model. And you're like, no, no, dude, this is no, 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 this is let's chill, let's let's take a step back and like let's look at like the actual main shape and like and then I want you to kind of like get the silhouette and get the whole thing. But then you know how to do this, you know how to actually translate that into the Overwatch style and then go back to like, what we want, what we want from a 3D point of view and, and use your translation skills. So there's always that we we also help like answering questions uh, regarding like is this piece is actually gonna work is it actually even appealing in 3D like it's insane the amount of work that actually like the weapon guys are doing like I don't know if you if you worked on an FPS yeah you might have like I'm not sure because you worked oh, yeah. on a bunch of stuff um, mm-hmm. there's something very specific about F- FPS and like the way that like those guys actually manipulate weapons a weapon will more so than anything else on our game be like. A, a joint effort between the 3D, the 3D artist and the and the 2D artist because uh, we we need to see that in 3D like something that will look really cool from like the side might look super crappy in first person. So mm-hmm. the 3D artist needs to kind of like redo the whole thing and say, okay, I kind of like blocked it out. Let's do a paint over on that. And so what you were saying, actually, it's kind of funny because you use ping pong as like a thing that you play, but like we use that that term as like a relationship thing where we'll literally ping pong those those concepts back and forth between 2D and 3D until it feels right. Yeah, no, that, for that's sure. the extent. Yeah, that that happens probably everywhere, and that's something that yeah. that that back and forth is what makes games like you know so so hard and so uh, fun to work because we kind of do the same thing where you kind of block it out something. You know, then there'll be tons of paint overs to finalize the concept mm. because we're trying to put stuff in the game as fast as we can so we can see it. It's exactly the same for us, yeah. Do you have like an example of like maybe like a character that like started one way and then you guys put in a game or like or like 3D kind of like influence that a little bit more? Was there like anything that, that would jump to mind? Oh, about like so the the one the one thing that was a, a very funny funny one from the last God of War was the the the, the Wolver is the werewolf character. Mm-hmm. He started as something that like Corey really wanted it in the game, and it was like I want this Wolver character to say a werewolf, but I do not want a werewolf. But we, wow. so we were like, all right, okay. challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> so what is exactly a what is exactly that like? What, let's just do like you know silhouettes, expression. So we you know start doing like probably about fifty of them, and then. At the end of the day, it was kind of like, oh, you know, he liked something like that, which is kind of a bigger kind of, more like a bear. So, mm-hmm. but then he was like, this is not really a 
werewolf. It's like a there's no wolf in here. It's like a, it looks like <laughs> it a still hits a spot though, right? <laughs> yeah. So like we made it, we made it like that big, like big. So I was like, okay, like so how is it gonna move? No, it's fast. So it's, it's, it's all like, and it's kind of the nature of creating games. So it's kind of you want that spark of new, but at the same time, there's like this kind of uh, feeling that you wanted to just be the same as something that you've seen it before, but you want something new. So then it's up to the artists and the gameplay animation, everything to just execute on that. And sometimes it works. Sometimes you get the, you know, the best things, but other times it just doesn't. So that thing kind of got canceled or it got cut from the game. Cause it was like, Oh, it just doesn't, it's just too fast. It's too big for what we're making. It just doesn't work. But then, you know, like uh, combat was like, they brought it back after uh, a couple of years of like, this thing was dead for, for, for a long time, and they're like, "Oh, that's, we need a, that's awesome, actually." You know, major crime. Yeah, I mean, but it was like effort of like one artist. It didn't come from like directors or anything. It was like this game designer was like, "We got this, and we got this X amount of animation. Let me just put it in." So like he did it, and then I looked at it. I was like, "You know what? I'm just gonna make a werewolf." Like I know what this <laughs> was like. I think I know how this is supposed to look. So I was like, "Let, just, let me try it." So we like block it out, something new. And then we put it in. I was like, yeah, this feels good. Like, and everybody liked it. And it was like, okay, this is something that, like you, like you said, just started as one thing. And then, you know, it just kind of evolved yeah. into this other thing. But and it's cool. Like, I really like the way that you do it as well. Like, it feels like, um, you know, like, I love the fact that like different studios and different teams have different approach. Like I feel like you guys concept a lot more in 3D, right? Like from what I'm gathering, like just because I mean, you're the director, like your background is also very 3D inspired and everything. So there must be like, maybe like, you know, like maybe a little bit more freedom for 3D artists to kind of like go for it, right? Yeah. To kind of like explore a little bit more, which is super cool. Like we, we get definitely that to, to some extent, but like it's it's just fascinating to see how successful games can just use so many different recipes for like like at least some of the ingredients like the thing that i think we share uh, between uh, god of war and overwatch is the blockout phase and the fact that you want to put this as soon as you can in the game on um, mm -hmm. for us it, it reached the point to like literally like uh, as an example like we have like so many stages of lockouts which are like kill switch if you will, like we have like what we called like, um, we call that like the Dylan special because it's coming from the fact that like our lead tech artist is called Dylan and like he'll literally with no artistic skills put together something that just like for, for, um, for Farah, for instance, right? We knew two things. We wanted somebody who uh, was shooting rockets going in, in, in the sky and was blue. We got a naked, a naked body blue with a box in the back and like a box in the front that was just jumping that was like literally like two hours we got that in the game right away just to see if it was even fun to shoot at right and then so that's the first thing if it if it passes that and then now because they have like more heroes they do like they create those abominations well they'll grab like the head of zara or like the, or like whatever and then they'll put like a machine gun from something else and you're like oh my god what is this yeah um but you know like that's the first yeah. part yeah exactly that's the first part and nobody cares about that it's fine so they are just trying to find and script the character in a way. And mm -hmm. then we'll get in at that point, once we find the fun, then, you know, like the concept team will come in and like kind of like sketch something that hopefully inspires and like reinforce the idea that we had for that character initially. Uh, and then we come in and we do a blockout that will actually literally be, uh, you can start it in whatever software you want, right? Like ZBrush, whatever, like, um, Believe it or not, some of us still use Mudbox from time to time, uh, <laughs> me included. Uh, but anyways, um, we'll actually push that back to um, Maya and actually do a super low poly or like a somewhat low poly meshes with hand painted textures. The reason mm -hmm. why we're doing that is that I'm literally spending three days on this thing and that's it. Like block it, it, like at least put like some of the topologies so rigging can actually take over and actually do something that actually looks like something. Yeah. We, we used to do this mission the simulation master is super cool, but like, like when your goal is to actually start answering questions, you sort of like need like a clean deformation. So we kind of like decided to kind of like have some clean loops. Uh, so that's the, or what we call like blockout 1.0. Yeah. And then if we like that, and then that's the, the that's where we're gonna actually just pose the character. We're just gonna pose it to kind of like make it look like the concept, put it in the game, see like how oh, do we scale it up? Do we scale it down? Like how does it look? Like we have a whole lineup where all those guys are lined up and we kind of like move move those guys around and kind of like scale them. It's like, oh, it's like between Zari and Doomfist. Is it bigger than Doomfist? Oh like you know like we, we kind of like play around with that. Like is it supposed to be a tank, whatever? Um and then once that's done, 
then we start to do like an animation ready block out where we, we spend a little bit more time, but still like a couple of days. And then the awesome stuff about that is that you unblock a lot of departments by doing that. Animation can literally start final animations, even though the final mesh is not there because the proportions are right. And you only spend maybe a week, a week and a half top on this. And they already have a final product, quote unquote. The only thing that we push sometimes to final because we know what we're doing now with topology and stuff like that is that I'll give them the face. I'll give them the face. So they have like a low poly version of the mesh and then the face, and then they just go. They can already animate with everything. And then once we're done with the final mesh, then they get a final mesh and then go. So we have a, our pipeline is really like block out, like you said, like it's like the keystone of the garage pipeline for sure. Yeah, we do a very similar pipeline. It's just, it's funny. Even the scale, we have a, a big scale review where like animators will do, you know, kind of a lot of different poses and they'll have fun with stuff that's not even like in the game. Oh, so just cool. kind of have the feel for the character and then kind of find the personality. It's funny that you brought up the decimation master because we, we did a lot of that in that mm -hmm. like the, the tech, the tech department was just like, <laughs> I hate you guys so much. Yeah. <laughs> you just stop doing this. Like, this is horrible. Like, I know you guys are trying to save time. So I even, like, one day, it's a funny story, but I made a, a T-shirt. I don't, I don't know if you've seen that T-shirt, but I made a T-shirt for the character team called Decimation Masters. Oh, my we God. The, we put that shirt at work. <laughs> the, That's great. Just to, like, okay. All like, the takeouts were, like. Yeah, we're sorry. <laughs> but it's too good. But, like, That's yeah. Awesome. we're We'll spend a little bit more time just cleaning it up because, like I said, the, a lot of departments will use that until like the last couple months of the project until like we'll get the final meshes ready. Absolutely. And ready. So the yeah. game looks like shit until the last like six and months. And it's totally fine. And totally and that's fine. another thing that like, you know, like you got to trust the process. You got to trust the process. And I, I get that from time to time from like more junior artists were like, my God, this looks like like garbage. Like, what are we going to do? And I was like... Have you ever seen like one of our games like actually coming out with that level of graphics? No, just don't worry. It's going to be fine. Just trust the process. It's going to be fine. That's the, literally the magic of video games where everything just no. looks horrible and people are freaking out until the last six months. Exactly. Uh, I understand, right? Like, because it is the way that we justify our jobs in the industry is like making stuff look pretty. So there is a, there is a little bit of a, of a freak out from artists from time to time whenever like that thing looks really average for like the longest time because they're like what am i doing what am i contributing to right yeah then at the end like everybody will will just that that'll be like the final layer of paint man that's what we do yeah all right we we have a lot of different questions here i'm, I, I'm okay. sorry guys if i didn't get to all of them uh this is a good one here and i think this is something i'm curious about too is that is there someone working on blizzard now that was discovered by like a new uh fan art or environment concept creation. Like we see a lot of awesome artists uh, creating those styles and creations. Have you ever hired someone because of a fan art or you know someone? All the time, all the time. Um, I'm blanking on his name, which is awful. But um, I think the most famous one that I know of is uh, the guy called uh, Mr. Jack on uh, Deviant Arts, Luke Mancini. So that guy started actually, um, funny story, started actually the same day as I did. We started October 2009 at Blizzard. And um, the guy got hired back then on the StarCraft team, I believe, because he literally did fan arts of every single Zerg ecologies or like the units, right, of the Zerg. And it was so good that like Sam Wise thought that they were actually better than what they did. And they hired the guy based on that. They were like, you have been killing it. We just want those designs. And 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 ever since then, you know, like he has been like going back and forth between projects and stuff like that. But each time that this guy makes a Zerg, everybody is like, we'll just do this. We'll just do that. And 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 I think it, it touched a little bit on, on like what I was saying um, earlier is that, yes, a fan art will definitely open the door for you because you're showing passion. You're showing understanding of the style. Um, and, and, and you're show, showing skills and you're showing that you want to work on that and you understand what it takes to actually work on that project. So for I would sure. say more so than ever, um, fan art is a really good way for us to actually discover people. Most of the people that I talked to in, in, the, in the last two years have been people that have had, like to some extent, some of the watch pieces were like inspired by the style in their portfolio because it just makes it easier. Because at the same time, like you were saying, like it's hard to hire, but there is also a sea of candidates. It's like a weird dichotomy here, right? Like you have like a lot of people 
but at the same time it's it's sometimes hard to kind of like pick who you want to hire or whatever so yeah. seeing like a good fan art of of the game that you're working on or something like that like you are already scoring points right there before even starting anything yeah yeah i think yeah. platforms is it more art station for you now Absolutely, 100% of session. I really like, and I could be wrong here, so I don't know how the algorithm works, but I feel like even though people might be intimidated by our station, if your piece is good, it will end up trending. For sure. Because there's a sm snowball effect. There's a snowball effect of like, like it doesn't take a lot of likes to actually end up on the trending page. Even like the only time, like the only difference from my understanding of it, so like what I've been witnessing is that it's the constant of the clicks that will keep you up there in the trending. But like, if you start to get like even three or four likes, sometimes there'll be like, or like uh, just like 10 likes, whatever, that'll be enough to actually put you at least shortly on the trend, on the trending stuff. If your piece is really good and then that's it. And then people discover, like I go like, that's basically like, that's my own page at work. Mm -hmm. It's like the trending from our station. Like that's <laughs> basically what I do. Like, like I, I click on like stuff. Like I think like, you know, like you have your likes under your favorite. Like oh like your favorites I think I have like more than five thousand <laughs> likes like like or like or like maybe four four thousand whatever but like I I keep clicking because I find I, stuff super I found awesome. that out like not not too long ago I went to my page I'm like what is this like thing and I clicked on it I have like maybe fifteen or something okay like, oh, man, it's amazing that's wrong. you can even sort them now you can actually yeah. put them in categories so if you want to kind of like say oh my god I'm looking for like somebody who's like super good at like making mechs or whatever you can actually yeah. start to kind of like like stuff and put them in categories. Yeah, cool. I love the collection feature. Yeah, like, exactly. That that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, dude. So hopefully that that answers the question. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. All right, let's do a one last one here. Um, just I, I guess about personal work. Yeah, Victoria is asking about personal work. Can you talk about more personal brainstorming on creatively design process of building uh, or an original character? And I know your personal work it's it's a little bit different than the Overwatch stuff. So how? for you like what what how does that yeah um i think i think i mean my work i mean lately i've been diving more into like collectible world like i mm -hmm. wanted to i saw you like doing so many collectibles i was like i want it yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah so um i think for me uh, the way that i tailor my 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 work is really something that i i discovered by working with arnold which is i building relationship with a concept artist for me is just the greatest thing on the planet like having like a really tight connection in like in this case i have like a really awesome connection with uh, johannes who's a concept artist who has been like concepting like the pinup that we just released and we have like a whole lineup of of a collective oh that's cool oh you broke up really sure. cool to be able to kind of like um you still there okay yeah, yeah cool yeah, yeah. uh yeah okay um and it's it's just super 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 awesome to be able to kind of like build that relationship and and because at the end of the day as a three artist the thing that makes me geek out the most and i know that for instance for you raf i think it's different i think that what makes you geek out is like coming up with your own concepts and kind of like grabbing an idea and kind of like coming up with that concept and it's mm -hmm. super awesome for me again because i love that relationship stuff and I, I have something about like coming up with a concept together with another concept artist and kind of like developing that style together. Um, there is something really powerful for me about being able to to translate something in 3D and really develop something. And, and again, with Johannes, we discovered that there was a way like we couldn't like translate one to one necessarily style, or, like we didn't want to. And like there was like like a, a little a little bit of that where like you 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 get your own style into it as well. Yeah. Um, so that's really what I'm chasing uh, for my personal. Uh, personal work as well and it was definitely influenced by my professional work and like just discovering how much i personally enjoy working with another person more than i just enjoy working by myself yeah no that's great and that's something i recommend to everybody who's starting as well like because like i mentioned uh, before it's just you can get confused a little bit with when you're trying to design everything everything or do everything because especially a character as a character artist the, the job is like there's so much it's so technical in a lot of ways that you can get lost if your design is not good. You might hurt your technical aspects of a, of the actual building that portfolio. So the more you can find a, a, con a concept and translate, like I find, like I probably find more pleasure doing that than trying to design something myself. Because often designing still for me comes with a lot of frustration. I think I'm getting better, but translating it for me is just like it's just so natural now that I, I just enjoy it. You know, every minute of it is yeah. just the execution. But I'm trying to get better at, at both, especially. Because I'm going more, a little bit more on this, uh, more on the design side of things than 
then staying Absolutely. just on the, yeah. on the on the execution. And, and the cool thing about that is that um, it's something that by just I'm sorry, my my connection keeps like breaking. Hopefully, I'm back. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, okay. It's like um, it's like. Like the more you start to work out of like the, those concepts and everything, the more you're gonna actually find your style, and then and then concepting something will actually become way easier as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I think I think I think yeah. Like I mean I, I mean even seeing that with with you, Raph, right? Like like the more you've been working on that, like the more like you just understand like the shapes that you want to get and everything, and like everything comes more naturally. So I think that like it's a really fun exercise to try to to match the style or like a different uh, concept or like, or like an artist or whatever, and kind of like diving into that. And then you, you just going to learn, like it's even like concept artists, like that's kind of like what, how they started. Like that's how everybody starts. I feel like it's like, you just, you just kind of like try to, to immerse yourself into somebody else's style until mm -hmm. you, there's something that just emerges each time that you do something from like a different artist. And you're like, Oh my God, I'm like actually developing my own style as well at the same yeah. time. So don't, don't be afraid of that, I would say. Like it's actually contributing to your own style as well. Perfect. Dude, that was awesome. Again, thank you so much. Are John. we done? Wow. We're okay. done, man. All right, all right. That was like. awesome. That went by fast, dude. Yeah. I know. We could, we could probably do more, but it's been like, what, it's an hour and a half? Yeah, an hour and a half, yeah. Good. good, awesome. But again, like uh, we had said, let's let's try to do it again. Like maybe we'll get more questions from people. I apologize again if we yeah. can answer every question, but yeah. I got it. A lot out of this so it was amazing. awesome awesome well that was that was super fun super super fun i i'm sorry if i sometimes i speak a little fast or i get I, I geek out a little bit too much about stuff but like yeah like yeah if you guys can can just hit me up and we can talk about stuff whatever you want man awesome yeah that, follow awesome. Uh, follow him on on social media his instagram art station i think those are the big the big ones right yeah they, they are they definitely are I'll put it on the description, but you guys, you know, use Google. You can use Google. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I mean, my, my name is a little hard, but <laughs> it's, it's fine. Copy. It's, on the, it's on the title. Exactly. It's just copy. <laughs> it was a pleasure, dude. Like, yeah, we should definitely do that more. Like, it, it's super cool, especially in like that confinement and stuff like that, being able to kind of like talk a little bit less about like, just like tasks and stuff like that. And actually like just talking about the industry and like where we're at is, is a pleasure. Like, I love it. For sure. For sure. Man. Thank, Thank you again for inviting me. Thanks, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep in touch and uh, we'll do this again for sure. All right, All right, that guys. sounds good. Take care, guys. Thank See you. you.